Here we would like to explain a bit more about our concept of schools as field sites for community-based cultural evolution, and how we would like to envision an applied working group within the Cultural Evolution Society, hosted by the Department of Comparative Cultural Psychology here at the Max Planck Institute for Evolutionary Anthropology in Leipzig, Germany. First, we must recognize that the construction of schools for the active teaching of a full curriculum is not only a uniquely human phenomena, but a relatively recent one at that. Critically, schooling is becoming a predominant mode of cultural transmission in humans, as we can see in this graph of the share of the world population with at least basic education, rising from below 20% in 1820 to well above 80% in 2015, a trend that is unlikely to subside. In fact, humans are actively working around the globe to ensure that trend increases. That is, the UN Sustainable Development Goals include the aim of universal education for all by 2030. This opens challenging questions to diverse school communities and cultural evolution researchers. What does this trend mean for communities least integrated into market economics? What does this mean for anthropological and cross-cultural psychological research in such field site communities where school development is emerging or probable? These are huge questions that span both foundational and applied research communities and which may demand new thinking about the relationship between such fields. Beyond issues of access to appropriate or valued school contexts, another related and underexplored global educational development issue is that of interdisciplinary education. Here we can ask what kind of science education is appropriate for which students and communities? This question elicits many different theories of school curriculum. And these theories of school curriculum often vary along multiple dimensions, including, for example, the acceptance and role of genetic evolution. Schools may or may not teach the basics of genetic evolution. The acceptance and role of generalized evolutionary dynamics. Schools may or may not teach generalized evolutionary dynamics across various domains. And lastly, models of disciplinary relationships within teaching and across curriculum design. Schools may variously aim to help students relate concepts across disciplines or encourage rigid disciplinary boundaries. While often these dimensions are global, conversations around the value of any given variant in a particular context may currently be quite limited to particular education innovation communities within particular cultural contexts. With these expansive questions in mind, we would like to suggest that an emerging conceptualization of schools as field sites for community-based cultural evolution can provide a critical and integrative framework for navigating a range of theoretical and practical scientific challenges in understanding and improving the role of schools in the valued cultural evolution of individuals and global society. Critically, a view of schools as field sites is not a top-down view from researchers onto the school communities being researched. Rather, our intent is the opposite. Our notion entails a focus on creating the conditions for endogenous cultural evolution from within school communities, focused on supporting the emergence and sustainability of valued outcomes in human and community development. It is in this context that we suggest the potential value for an applied working group within the Cultural Evolution Society. And so we make a modest proposal. We suggest that clarifying the concept of schools as field sites for community-based studies of cultural evolution holds promise for navigating the ethical, methodological, theoretical, and logistical complexities facing interdisciplinary human scientists and sustainable development specialists. We are suggesting that an applied working group can and should work across three domains of conceptual development. 
In ethics, we should work to advance a cross-cultural research ethics framework for the development and support of schools as field sites. In synthesis, we should work to advance a knowledge synthesis on concepts, theories, and methods for understanding school cultural evolution through relations across basic research and applied community science projects. And in infrastructure, we should work to advance tools for data management and other research collaboration infrastructure. Let's take a bit deeper look at each of these three core proposed areas. The ethical dimensions of thinking about schools as field sites from an endogenous cultural evolution perspective are numerous, such that we can only hint at some promising directions for clarification here. Clearly, how cross-cultural researchers choose to relate or not to schools within regional field sites represents a significant ethical and practical dimension of this cross-cultural research. We and others, such as Arasa et al., argue that a coherent, integrative, and equitable or decolonized approach is needed, yet the role of school engagement in such a strategy remains poorly defined. And so we suggest that a community-based conceptualization of schools as field sites may provide a helpful direction. And as so often is the case, solutions likely require cooperation across disciplinary and stakeholder boundaries. And this includes more strategic thinking about the relationship between foundational and applied sciences, which may have both overlapping and divergent ethical interests. In this context, we suggest that an applied working group within CES could support the development of an ethical framework for community-based cultural evolution research. Such a research framework could include multi-level guidance for schools, regions, and international actors placing schools and local communities in control of long-term school improvement aims. Situated considerations of cost-benefit analysis for differing local communities. Situated considerations of the responsibilities and appropriate boundaries of differing researchers and research communities. And ethics-informed data management rubrics and workflow examples. Here, we have sketched a perhaps idealized model of research influence and data flow within a school field site. In our model, networks of school culture researchers comprised of school improvement and teacher education specialists, as well as teacher leaders and evolutionary anthropologists, work together to facilitate a supportive context for school-based improvement processes grounded within an ongoing knowledge synthesis in the human sciences. As schools develop their own field site capacities and evolve institutions to sustain school internal community scientists, including students, school and community stakeholders, the school itself can endogenously create the conditions favoring their valued outcomes, and in this way, drive more mutually enriching relationships with external researchers. Critically, optimal levels of support, influence, and control of data are likely to vary widely with contextual and project level factors. The aim within an applied working group of this concept would be to clarify those relevant dimensions and attendant ethical considerations. A critical challenge we face in communicating the scope of our vision for schools as field sites is the very genuine concern that schools are all so different. In some cases, we are speaking uh, more to school contexts in more remote less market-integrated communities where schools may be new or only soon to be emerging. In other cases, we're talking about advanced interdisciplinary human science education, currently the purview of privileged schools within a few weird societies. We're not suggesting that all schools can be engaged in similar ways. So how could we decide, how should we decide how to engage with which schools? In which schools is more open and applied collaboration possible? In which schools are more peripheral or no relations preferable? On what basis can or should researchers make such judgments? 
we suggest answers to such questions lie within the, the second core area of our proposed working group. Namely, that we must ask how we should characterize school cultural diversity, that the weird, non-weird distinction is likely far too generalized to be of much help, that, that we need to recognize that schools are complex microcultures within a complex of regional and global diversity. And in this way, we do not yet have the clarity on which dimensions schools could or should be class classified. These are questions of knowledge synthesis. Thinking of schools as field sites may open up new horizons on the landscape of understanding the human condition. When it comes to foundational scientific work within comparative, cultural, and or evolutionary psychological perspectives, we can see current literature has illuminated some insights into the ecological contexts in which teaching and learning dynamics may emerge across some species and within small-scale societies. Yet how exactly the ecological contexts and cultural variations of teaching and learning within modern school contexts might be understood or investigated in a cultural evolutionary frame remains a significantly underexplored space for further inquiry. On a very basic level, schools can clearly be conceptualized as places of cultural, cognitive, and behavioral evolution. Yet while some evolutionary conceptualization and modeling work has been done at the level of higher education, such as this work from Grunspan, Klein, and Brunel, no such work that we know of has been developed for the general education context. Even at a more basic conceptual level regarding how we might characterize cultural diversity within and between schools, there exists a significant, if diverse, literature but very little interdisciplinary knowledge synthesis. In this light, we might further want to ask the question, how does school culture influence sociocognitive development? And here we can look across foundational evolutionary anthropology of teaching across cultures and applied research in school culture development. Some constructs may closely map across these fields while Others may use adjacent terminology or represent largely, if not entirely disparate literatures investigating a very similar conceptual space. In this way, much work remains to clarify what, if any, insights, opportunities, or challenges may be presented in a stronger synthesis about the nature and developmental consequences of school cultural diversity. Critically, while variation exists across individual researchers, both foundational and applied fields of teaching and school culture have a theoretical context grounded in evolutionary accounts of human sociocognitive development. This places cultural evolution science in a unique vantage point for leading a knowledge synthesis towards a rigorous and applied cultural evolutionary educational psychology. Given our applied aims, we can suggest we begin to look more strategically at school improvement processes as complex cultural evolutionary processes. Here we can ask, what is evolving? We think about this question in terms of the multitude of variation producing processes and frequency changing processes that influence the dynamic assemblages of school design elements on the one hand, things like teaching practices, norms, and attitudes, but also curricular content and the relationships between content. And on the other hand, theories of schooling or beliefs about the causes and consequences of school design variance in favoring variance in human developmental outcomes. Such theories may be composed of more or less scientific content and or the full palette of other cultural resources an individual may draw from. Importantly, as with much of cultural evolution, the cultural evolution of schools is neither a fully intentional nor wholly blind process. Rather, the task of school improvement science is to clarify intentions and create the conditions favorable to the retention and expansion of valued characteristics within a given school community. At a deeper level, and in addition to school design elements and theories of schooling, we can also conceptualize another set of interdependent constructs likely to be evolving within school contexts. 
psychological flexibility is a construct derived from the contextual behavioral sciences and relates to how school community members can engage in persisting with or changing their behaviors in relation to identified values. Psychological flexibility is a human capacity that can be cultivated within individuals and groups and has known correlates with physical and mental health, as well as academic achievement and group cooperation. And for this reason, is an increasingly common target in international school improvement programs. On the other hand, conceptual understanding represents the networked concepts and conceptual relations uh, an individual or group employs to categorize the world around them. Almost every school day, students and teachers are evolving conceptual networks within and between many different subject-specific areas. Critically, these two constructs are likely to be deeply interdependent in complex ways, with very little currently being understood about these relationships. When school community members engage these processes in service of understanding and improving their own school, they can be said to be engaged in a process of consciously evolving their own theories of schooling. And in this way, we suggest the concept of theories of schooling offers a uniquely integrative construct for an emerging knowledge synthesis across previously disconnected fields of inquiry. As a brief exposition, we propose that the construct of theories of schooling can help bridge some foundational and applied research questions in the sense that all humans exposed to the concept of schooling likely develop ethno theories about the nature, purpose, value, and optimal design of schools. Theories of schooling are likely structured around perceived functional causal interdependencies of school design elements within a perceived individual and societal context and are likely interdependent with theories of human development and cultural evolution. Theories of schooling evolve over generations and within our lifetimes. Equally, all science-informed theories of schooling have some degree of contextualization or explicit relation to evolutionary theory and are equally interdependent with more or less explicated theories of human development and theories of cultural evolution. And finally, School improvement science itself is founded on making intuitive, folk, and or quasi-scientific theories of school improvement explicit and testable, or scientific, and arguably contextualized by broader scientific theory. Theories of schooling can also be related to a diversity of extant and emerging threads within cultural evolution and applied education research. In this way, the theories of schooling construct offers a strong candidate foundation for synthesizing foundational and applied literatures on the cultural evolution of teaching and learning. We suggest that theories of schooling can be a focus within school field sites for more traditional school culture research, as well as a frame and driver for the community-based co-design of school improvement projects. Foundational researchers more interested in understanding the origins and cross-cultural development of teaching and learning may benefit from increased access to better conceptualized constructs and improved measurements of key cultural and or other contextual variables that may enrich and contextualize findings from observational or experimental studies in the field beyond the school walls. More applied researchers interested in supporting school improvement processes may benefit from the deeper relationship to foundational scientific perspectives on human learning and cultural evolution, as well as an evolving collection of tools and processes for guiding the selection of healthy variation in a local community context. It should be noted here that the relationship between foundational and applied researchers in school contexts is complex, messy, and potentially contentious, and we are currently working on further resources to help clarify and guide these relationships towards more productive and engaged cross-disciplinary discourse. To facilitate this discussion, we work closely with ProSocial World as active leaders in ProSocial Schools, an international networked improvement community focused on knowledge synthesis and collaborative school improvement research. 
ProSocial has advanced a relatively simple framework to facilitate knowledge synthesis and methods development around two leading theoretical frameworks. From the cross-cultural work of Eleanor Ostrom to identify eight core design principles for the effective cooperation of groups at, at multiple levels of organization, ProSocial facilitates the flexible adaptation of group dynamics towards shared values and better alignment of individual and group interests. From the contextual behavioral sciences, the concept and processes of psychological flexibility can help individuals and groups better clarify their values, diffuse from unhelpful thoughts or actions, and move towards more committed action in the valued domains of concern. These high-level theoretical frameworks allow for a remarkable breadth of theoretical perspectives to become synthesized and integrated within a practical applied framework for helping groups of all kinds to work better together. As we advance this ethical framework and knowledge synthesis, it becomes clear that a central constraint for this work is research infrastructure, our final proposed area for an applied working group. Building on the work of Alexander et al. on qualitative data synthesis for sustainability science, we have begun to outline some foundational needs to support the longitudinal, comparative, cumulative, and participatory analyses of research into the causes and consequences of school cultural evolution. Our first effort at such infrastructuring work has been oriented towards science education-informed approaches to school improvement. The Open Evo Research and Learning Hub is now live with limited access to selected partners. This platform provides a proof of concept for the kind of networked school improvement research infrastructure needed to help empower and grow an international research community in this space. OpenEvo aims to connect with those school communities who resonate with interdisciplinary approaches to evolution and the human sciences. Other schools may prefer to keep educational content more separate from school improvement processes, and here the less restrictive frame of pro-social schools will offer a broader array of supports and tools. Let us end by reflecting on our next steps. Our vision for schools as field sites is ambitious, expansive, and we hope may have a transformative impact on the learning trajectories of young minds and communities around the world. Please do not let the ambition lead you to skepticism, as our vision is highly scalable. Our work in Leipzig and our growing network of collaborators demonstrates that we are not so far from a model that allows coherent global collaboration while also supporting local adaptation and endogenous cultural evolution as appropriate in any given community. If you find the vision compelling, please consider any of the following. Join OpenEvo by visiting our website. Stay tuned for a planned late summer 2021 open meeting. And finally, feel free to contact me, Dustin Erdosh, with any questions, comments, concerns, ideas, or interests you may have in this project. We look forward to working with you further.